particular video, we're going to take a look at the uh, 14th Amendment um, and look at it in terms of what it involves. Uh, uh, a lot of people think that the 14th Amendment may be the most important of the amendments uh, because of the things that, and we'll, we'll start to look at some of the reasons why, uh, how it applied then, how it applies today. Uh, the main thing to remember about the 14th Amendment, it is part of the Civil War amendments. Uh, it was passed in 1869, right after the Civil War. Uh, the 13th, 14th, and 15th Amendment were all passed uh, one right after another. Of course, the easiest way to remember those is if you think of it in, in uh, logical terms. The 13th Amendment outlawed slavery, which was the first thing that they had to take care of. The 14th Amendment, again, in its basic form, um, freed the slaves, offered citizenship to anyone who was born in the United States or had been born in the United States. And the 15th Amendment gave all citizens a right to vote. So if you think of it in logical terms, those three fall into place. Um, but the, the, what's important to remember, and then we'll start to see, is that the 14th Amendment is carried over into many of the uh, uh, civil rights cases of modern times and uh, other cases as well. So a lot of people consider this to be the most important amendment. That's why we're taking some time today to uh, take a look at that. Uh, as we look at it as a whole, what I've done, I've broken it into three different parts. You read the red, the blue, and the uh, green. All persons born and naturalized citizens of the United States and subject to the jurisdiction thereof are citizens of the United States and the state wherein they reside. No state shall make or enforce uh, any law which shall abridge the privileges or immunities of that citizens uh, of the United States. That's a uh, privilege and immunities clause. And that nor shall any deprive uh, any person of life, liberty, or property without the due process of law, of course, the due process clause there, or deny any person within his jurisdiction the equal protection of the laws. Uh, so with that reading, let's go ahead and take a look at it, break it down, and look at the different parts. The first part at the top of the red part uh, says all persons born or naturalized in the United States subject to jurisdiction thereof are citizens of the United States and the state wherein they reside. Now, you got to look at a couple. you got natural born. You've got two different ways that you can become a citizen in the United States. You can be natural born, obviously, be born on American soil, or you could be naturalized, meaning that you are coming from another country, you have citizenship in another country, and you go through the process, take the test, do all the things you need to do in order to uh, be granted your citizenship, receive your uh, green card. Uh, now, initially, this applied to the slaves, obviously, uh, you know, any, any, anybody who was born on American soil. But today, obviously, it, it changes uh, uh, immigration status. You know, a lot, of the, a lot of people question why we can't uh, simply take people who aren't legal citizens away and uh, uh, deport them back to wherever they came from. And again, a lot of it has to do with the fact you would be breaking a lot of families up because uh, many of these, it doesn't say anything about the uh, legal status of the parents. It simply says that if you were born on American soil, then you are an American citizen. So you have a lot of uh, illegal aliens who may have citizenship, who may have children who are citizens. If you started deporting people and things like that, then you would be in a situation where you're going to be breaking up family. So it's not as simple as a lot of times you think Think, but uh, again, this is kind of the way that that applies. Uh, moving on, we, we put we take apart and put together uh, uh, the rest of the, no state shall make it or enforce any law which shall abridge the privileges or immunities of the citizen of the United States, nor shall any state deprive any person of life, liberty, or property without the due process of law. And what that simply means is, is that you you cannot be accused of a crime or, or convicted of a crime without actually going through the due process of law, meaning that you have to have a hearing and different things like that. It also applies uh, in more modern terms to your Miranda rights. Um, that must be read to you in order for you to be uh, arrested or have charges uh, brought against you. Uh, your Fifth Amendment clause, which uh, provides you with the right to uh, not incriminate, your, incriminate yourself. Um, so, you know, that's that's your Fifth Amendment right. Uh, you hear two people say they're going to plead the Fifth. That's what they're talking about. You don't have to incriminate yourself. And uh, But basically what it amounts to is that due process uh, does guarantee you a day in court uh, quality in terms of justice administration. 
uh, or administration of justice, quality in terms of protection of rights, the efficiency and the effectiveness. So those are the four elements of the due process. Of course, the political cartoon in the middle, a lot of people have kind of questioned uh, uh, some of our civil rights. This is a uh, depicting Uncle Sam giving up many of his civil rights as he's going through airports. And of course, we, we do that to try to provide a safer environment. But, um, you know, again, you have to start questioning at what point we draw a line in the sand and say uh, people are going too far. Uh, in uh, giving up too many of the rights. Uh, the Equal Protection Clause is the one that falls at the end, nor deny any person within the jurisdiction of equal protection of the laws. Uh, this refers to the equal rights, uh, whether it be male, female, uh, it's based on race, gender, religion, whatever the case may be. Um, and, and my favorite part of it there at the end, it kind of throws in there, is whether it's intentional or consequential, intentional or whether it's consequential, meaning that it doesn't necessarily have to happen uh, intentionally. You don't have to intentionally be trying to uh, discriminate against someone, but if it does happen, uh, it's still covered under this ethical protection law. Uh, some of the different cases that came up uh, deal with Plessy versus Ferguson, 1896. Uh, again, this is this is kind of crazy, but we actually had a Supreme Court case in 1896 called Plessy versus Ferguson, which said that uh, separate facilities were as long as they were equal, were legal, uh, which led to the Jim Crow laws that we saw all the way through the uh, early to mid 1900s. And uh, again, they were all overturned in 1954 with Brown versus Board of Education, where they, um, Justice Warren basically said that uh, separate was inherently unequal. Uh, and, and set in process the civil rights movements of the, th the 60s and the 70s. Uh, but this is this is where this comes from, the equal protection under the, under the Constitution, uh, equal protection of the laws. Uh, that's, that's, where that, that's where that goes. So and as far as reviewing, we start to look at it in main, three main projects. You've got your citizenship meaning, meaning that provided, provided citizenship for all people who are either naturalized or born in the United States. You have your due process clause, which prevents states from denying life, liberty, or property without the due process of law. And you have the equal protection law, which ensures that all people are treated equally under the law. Uh, now, again, you do have to remember that this is uh, uh, Section 1 of the 14th Amendment. There's much more to it. But this is the one that usually catches most of the attention. Uh, this is the one that, that made it legal. For the federal government to step into certain situations, civil rights that, uh, situations, different things like that, and try to help provide citizen provide protection uh, to those uh, that were American citizens. But 